Proverbs 28 1 says that the wicked run, though nobody is chasing them. Now, I know some of you are like, amen, that's right. I don't need to run. Running's bad for you. I'm not wicked. I've got nothing to run from. Obviously, it's a metaphor, but I actually do like running. Not running from problems or running from particular people, just running for exercise. I don't know if you know this, but long distance running is like one of the oldest forms of athletic competition in the world. They've been running since the, probably even before the first Olympic Games in Greece, the modern marathon, 26.2 miles. It's been competing for about 120 years. One thing that has, has changed over time is the way that you train for long distance running. Right? The shoes have changed, but what hasn't changed is the clothing that you wear when you do long distance running, when you're running marathons. Right? When you see those Kenyans or people crossing the finish line in first place, what are they wearing? Not much. Right, They're wearing short shorts and a, a tank top. The least amount of resistance as possible is what they're going for so that they can run with perseverance or run with endurance. And that's what the Bible says. We should run like as followers of Jesus. Hebrews chapter 12 puts it this way, starting in verse 1. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, talking about the hall of fame of faith, all of these people that have gone before us and have finished the race, okay, they have got, they've done it so we can do it as well. It says, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles and let us run with perseverance. The race marked out for us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith. For the joy set before him, he endured the cross, scorning his shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. I, I love this verse for many different reasons. One is how do you continue to run and go through hard times, endure through hard times? You fix your eyes on Jesus, right? You, you think about the pain, the agony, what he went through. And said, hey, he went through it all. He has pioneered for us. And because of him pioneering, we know that God loves us. Even in the midst of the hardship that he is there, that he can he can relate to us. And so when we pray and we seek him in the times of our need, like we know he can empathize with us because we have a, a great high priest, the book of Hebrews says, who's able to sympathize with us, empathize with us in our weakness and our struggles. And so we can go to him. He's not aloof. He's not like, okay, figure it out yourself. He's, he, he's concerned because he knows what it's like to experience this pain and hardship and rejection. So we fix our eyes on Jesus. Another thing I love about this verse is how it says that we're to race to, to run the race that is marked out for us. Run the race that is marked out for us. One thing that I've learned as a runner is it's good for you to have a race marked out for you when you're running. Have like a set distance in mind and maybe have a, a, a path to take that, you know, okay, I'm going to go, you know, down this path and I'm going to take a left here and then I'm going to take a right there. And then I'm going to go number one, so you don't get lost, but also so you don't cheat yourself on your workout. Cause it's easy for you. You know, the, there's a nice day and you're like, oh man, it's such a beautiful day out. This is a great day for running. And so you get your new shoes on, you get your socks on. You're like, I'm going to go for a run and you get all excited. You're like, I think it's like a, I think it's like a 5k day. I think I'm thinking I'm going to run 5k. Yeah. Haven't done it in a while, but I think, I think it's a perfect day for a 5k. And then you get out there and you start running, you start huffing and puffing, your feet start hurt, and you're like, did I say 5K? I think I meant a 1K. I think I meant a 1K will be good enough today. You know, around the block and I'll be good. And that's what happens when we don't have the race clearly marked out for us and saying, hey, you got to finish this race. This is, you don't get home, you don't, you don't shower, you don't get food until you finish this race that is marked out for you. When we mark out the race for ourselves, it's easy to compromise. It's easy to kind of just be like, oh, okay, that's good enough. I, I heard a lot during COVID with people working out. They're like, I thought I was working out, but I was just doing it in my garage. So I'd kind of just start with a plan then kind of just say, okay, that's good enough, right? I did a few lifts. Probably wasn't as much as I should have done, but it was good enough. But the Bible says, hey, run the race that is marked out for you. So what's the race that is marked out for you? In your marriage, it's till death do you part. I know sometimes people get into marriages and that's the race that's marked out for them. And they're like, yeah, that's, the, that's, that's good, right? And then you get into marriage and you're like, did I really say till death do us part? I thought I thought I thought I meant until I'm no longer happy or until, you know, this person is just 
driving me insane, okay, until it's no longer working for me. No, that's not the race that is marked out for you. The race that is marked out for you is until death do you part. And so you figure out a way, you work, and you struggle, and you fight for your marriage. The race that is marked out for you as a family, right, is to raise up kids that are going to know Jesus. And so you're being like, hey, you know, when I knew when we started having kids, I made the commitment that I was going to raise them to know the Lord, to Make them come to church, even if it's not like something they want to do, but it's good for them. And we're going to do family devotionals. And then you do family devotionals for a couple of days. And you're like, did I really say we were going to do family devotionals every night? Maybe I meant once a year, right? Maybe maybe once a year is good enough. No, run the race that is marked out for you. Not the one that's convenient. Not the one that just feels good. Okay. But run with endurance, perseverance, the race that is marked out for you. Another thing I, I love about this text of scripture, it says, in order for us to run with perseverance, what are we going to have to do? We're going to have to get down and get simplify things, called get down to those short shorts, get down on those tank tops, get down to find, okay, the attire that is going to give us the least path of resistance towards our goal. Something that's not going to have a lot of drag and weight on our bodies and our souls, on our minds to be able to follow Jesus. And so what are the things that are hindering you from running the race with endurance today? What's the sin that's entangling you? Perhaps it's this iPhone that you're watching this devotional on. It keeps getting you into trouble. You keep using it to go to websites that you shouldn't go to. You keep on getting notifications from social media that your friend's on this vacation, your friend just bought this car, this house, or is at this country club, or went to this winery, or you know went to this this amazing thing that they got to do, this concert. And you're like, man, that's what I want to do. And and all of a sudden we feel this discontentment in life, and maybe it even tempts us to say, I need that. I need that in order to be happy. And instead of following Jesus, instead of serving other people, loving other people, and that being where you get your joy from, or being generous, we're kind of focused on having this life of many things and experiences and retiring early and having a nice car and a big house. And it prevents us from being sacrificial with our time and our resources. It's keeping us from following Jesus because... Sometimes it's just this phone that keeps on giving us all these messages, distracting us from quality time with our family. Maybe the thing that's entangling you is a smartphone. Maybe it would be better for you to get a dumb phone. Trade in your smartphone for a dumb phone where you're less distracted, you're more focused on following Jesus and being more present with your loved ones and with God. There's other things that can entangle us, hinder us. Maybe it's just stuff. We've overaccumulated stuff. Our houses are too big. We're always trying to keep it clean. We got too big of a yard. And maybe we need to downsize so we can have more time, more energy to focus on serving God and serving others. Maybe it's to simplify, right? Sell some things, get a smaller house. I don't know what it is, but think for a moment. Jesus, what are the things that are hindering me? What's the extra weight that I'm carrying around that is, man, dragging me down and is draining me of energy and time of resources to keep me from serving you and living like your son, Jesus? What's keeping me from running the race with perseverance, with endurance? That's the question I want to just have you wrestle with. I'm going to end with that question and have you think about that as we pray. What's weighing you down? What's hindering you? What do I need to get rid of in my life to be able to follow Jesus a little bit better today? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, God, I thank you for your word and the scripture that reminds us that, yes, that we can run with perseverance, but we got to run lightly. We, we got to run with maybe a few less things, maybe a few less distractions. So God, bring to our mind and our attention what we need to walk away from. Maybe it's a maybe it's a toxic relationship, God. Maybe it's um, some material possessions, right? Maybe maybe it's a dream of a vision of a future of just comfort and just you know nice car, wonderful retirement. But maybe maybe some of those dreams aren't focused on you. So help us to relinquish those dreams, give them over to you, so our dreams can be focused on following your son Jesus and running the race that is marked out for us with perseverance and endurance, God. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen.